My life really began to change when I learned how to stop my seizures several steps before they occurred. My name is Joshua Coors. I'm an investigative reporter, an attorney, and I have epilepsy. I had my first seizure when I was in eighth grade. After a Tom Petty concert, I had had a huge fight with a family friend, and I went home steaming mad. My brain, I guess you could say, volcanically erupted while I was asleep, woke up the next morning in the hospital. After that, the seizures came in waves, and it was really difficult. Going through those high school years, I tried to look cool, act normal, but really, it was like this black lightning cloud was over me, a seizure threatening to strike at any random moment. That danger at every potential churn, it creates an anxiety that is not only awful to live with, but also very conducive to having more seizures. Eventually, my mother learned about the Andrews Ryder Treatment Facility in Santa Rosa, California. She took me up there and I learned about their psychological approach to epilepsy and I learned how to stop my seizures. The Andrews Ryder Facility began with neuropsychologist Dr. Donna Andrews. She had had encephalitis when she was younger, ended up in a coma, and after waking up had waves and waves of seizures. Her neurologist told her that there was nothing that she could do about it, that the damage to her neurons was done. Then she had a breakthrough. If the damage to her neurons was there all the time, why wasn't she having seizures all the time? That was the spark for her. She started realizing that there were specific triggers for each of these damaged neurons that could lead to seizures. And if she could recognize those early signs of a seizure, and stop those triggers from firing. She could have those damaged neurons all her life and just never have another seizure. Eventually, she turned to Dr. Joel Ryder, a Harvard-educated neurologist. Together, they formed this program where they taught this psychological approach to stopping seizures to thousands and thousands of epileptics over the decades. The treatment approach is actually pretty simple. Patients come in, they begin doing seizure journals. By doing this seizure journal, writing down each of the seizures and all the details surrounding it, you start to make connections. You start to realize, oh, well now, before each of these seizures, uh, I get a wave of anger or nervousness. Or before these seizures, I have some physical indications called auras. For me, it was like a light in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, for others, it's things getting brighter, a certain smell or a, a tingling in their fingers. And with the Andrews Writer Program, they teach you how to recognize not just the auras, but the physical indications before those auras, those pre-auras, and then the pre-pre-auras. So eventually, I learned how to recognize these oncoming seizures several steps before they occur. And then, through focused relaxation, I learned how to deflate those electrical surges before they grew to become a grand mal seizure. Some of those relaxation techniques, they're very similar to meditation. Breathing, relaxing, calming the mind. One of the techniques I learned was uh, developing a, a safe mental space. For me, it's the Mississippi River, like Huck Finn, going down on the raft at sunset, the calm of that image brings down my cerebral electricity and stops my damaged neurons from overfiring. Talk therapy is a key portion of the uh, treatment as well, talking out what you're going through. And then finally, Dr. Andrews and Dr. Ryder created a workbook, Taking Control of Your Seizures. It's available on Amazon. Anybody can use it. It walks you through the program, how to start journaling, how to recognize those early signs of a seizure, how to build up those skills of deflating electrical surges before they proceed on to a full-blown seizure. For me, going to that program in California was 25 years ago. And now, 
I'm still using those techniques every day. I think about my work as an attorney going to the New York Supreme Court. It's nerve-wracking. The building is huge. These cases are high pressure. And before I can step into that facility, you know, sometimes with my nervousness, I start seeing those auras and pre-auras. The world around me will suddenly get brighter. The contrasts will change. Things getting darker and lighter. Suddenly my vision will go redder as if it's been passed through a Photoshop filter. If I do something, I can deflate things there. If I ignore it and let it go, suddenly that light in the upper right hand corner will begin to flash. And then if it keeps going, my vision will black out and I'll have a grand mal seizure. The threat of that happening right there on the steps of the Supreme Court is terrifying. But now I don't have to worry about that because when I see those indications of a seizure coming, those pre-auras, I go to my Mississippi River, I watch the sunset relaxing on the waves and the raft, and boom, within a second, I'm right back to normal. I'm still keeping a seizure journal, documenting those visual irregularities. And I think the biggest impact of Dr. Andrews was that I'm using a lot of common sense. I, I, I think about taking a shower for years, that was a very nervous proposition for me because when the water would pound down on my eyes, that would create a visual irregularity very similar to uh, an aura with a, a light starting in the upper right-hand corner of my vision. I mentioned it to my neurologist and he was saying to me, oh, maybe we should increase your medication. Maybe we need to change the medication. I, I mentioned it to Dr. Andrews and she said, well, why don't you just wear goggles in the shower? Now, I've been wearing goggles in the shower for years, and boom, that problem is completely in the past. I've also changed my diet, eliminating desserts and sugary foods that lead to high cerebral electricity, and instead moving on to salads and vegetables to give my brain every chance possible to go without having a seizure. Recently, I've also been going for neurofeedback at a facility here in New York with Dr. Merlin Hurd. That treatment's pretty straightforward. They put EEG monitors all over my head, recognizing my alpha waves. And the approach there is to make sure that those alpha waves stay slow and smooth and relaxed. We watch Sherlock on Netflix, a show that's in color. And if my alpha waves remain slow and smooth and calm, it stays in color. But as soon as my alpha waves become higher in amplitude, stressed out, anxious, the screen fades to black and white. Eventually, the brain learns to get that positive feedback, earn the color by keeping those brain waves slow and smooth and relaxed. I've made other common sense changes at my home, like installing blackout blinds so that I have a deeper and darker sleep. I've also purchased a pregnancy pillow that forces you to sleep on your side where your breathing is smoother and clearer. It eliminates snoring and makes sure that the brain gets all the oxygen it needs to stay seizure free. And I've joined a meditation group for lawyers. We meditate every Monday and I increase my skill of staying at that slow, smooth alpha wavelength. Exercise has been a big part of my health as well. Even when it's snowing, I'm out there jogging, trying to deflate my cerebral electricity so that there's no need to have a seizure. And I've also been trying to build off both the Andrews Rider techniques and the neurofeedback approaches. One technique that I've been using very skillfully lately is uh, this idea of reconnecting with what's in front of me. I started to notice that when I was having those pre-seizure auras, it was because I was lost in some stressful or anxious thought. But if I can reconnect with what's in front of me, then all of a sudden it snaps my brain back to a healthy place. So for example, just before I head into the Supreme Court, when things get brighter, and redder and the contrast of my images start to change, I'll look at the lamp that's right in front of me. I'll look at the snow that's on the steps right to the right of that and plugging into those images that are right there in my present moment, boom, my brain stops 
goes right back to normal. As Dr. Hurd said, the brain can't do the wrong thing and the right thing at the same time. So if you're doing the right thing, like engaging with the world right in front of you, the brain will simply stop doing the wrong thing. Years ago, when I went to Columbia Journalism School, I got the opportunity to explore the Andrews Ryder approach in far more detail, doing a year of investigative reporting on the medical data behind the treatment program. I eventually turned that into an article for Current Science and shared that information at the University of Toronto Medical Center, where we had an epilepsy conference. People with epilepsy and neurologists from all over the world came to learn more about the Andrews Ryder treatment and the peer-reviewed studies that support it. Now, I want to share some of those peer-reviewed studies for you. If you're a science person like me, the question is not whether some treatment is alternative or not. What's really important is, does it work? Is there real science to back it up as effective medicine? To put the Andrews Ryder medical studies in context, I always think about the Depakote study done by Abbott Laboratories when they first introduced that medication. Their research showed that 4% of the patients taking that medication stopped having seizures. Now, 4% may seem like nothing, but it was large enough because seizures are so hard to control that Depakote became one of the foundational treatments for epilepsy. The Andrews Ryder studies, they started with just five patients. Dr. Andrews and Dr. Ryder studied these patients and their seizure frequency before they came in for the treatment and then studied them after the treatment. All of those patients, having gone through the treatment, improved. One of them stopped having seizures even after medication was removed and others stopped having seizures after their medication was reduced to the lowest therapeutic dose. In the follow-up study, they expanded to 83 patients, once again monitoring them for weeks before the treatment and then for many months after the treatment. 83% of those 83 patients stopped having seizures altogether. And of those patients that had only six or fewer seizures per month, 90% of them stopped having seizures as well. Of course, you can't make a direct comparison between those two sets of numbers. We're not talking about the same number of patients. We're not talking about the same patients either. But those numbers were enough to catch the attention of many prominent neurologists. Now, during my reporting, I spoke with Dr. Carl Bazil, Columbia University. He told me that the study was an absolute breakthrough that this idea of controlling seizures before they occur by using psychological approaches, focusing in on the triggers. He said it was a new tool that neurologists needed to be using, and he was very direct with me. He said the reason he wasn't using it before was because he was ignorant. He said, I simply didn't know about this. Now, he said, he incorporates psychological approaches to treating patients with epilepsy. Of course, there were still neurologists who were vehemently against this treatment approach. I spoke with Dan Lowenstein, a neurologist from UCSF, who told me that this was absolute bunk, that the idea that a person could control their seizures by reducing stress or anxiety, the idea that someone could deflate a seizure before they occur, that that was absurd. Other prominent neurologists, like Dr. Stephen Schachter at Harvard University, were on the same page as Dr. Brazil. He said that it was simply common sense that seizures would be triggered by psychological factors and that addressing those factors could help stop seizures. He said that neurologists too often were minimizing treatment of epilepsy to just passing out pills. He described the Andrews Ryder approach as a significant step forward in the treatment of epilepsy. And the final study that the Andrews Ryder program did, I think bears him out. In that study, there were 44 patients and they were monitored for several months before their treatment and for two years after they were treated. In the first two months before their treatment, those 44 patients had a combined seizure total of 1,078 seizures. In the final two months of the follow-up, they together had only 20 seizures, a decrease in seizure frequency of 98%. So now the most important question, will this work for you? Well, of course, I, I can't tell you the answer to that question. 
um, just one patient that went through the program that wanted to share this information. Everybody watching this video has different types of seizures or a different cause for their epilepsy. But what I can say is that it's changed my life. And I know I'm not the only one. When I was reporting on this story for Columbia Journalism School, Dr. Andrews went back through 23 years of patient records, looking over more than 2,300 patients who had gone through the program. Of those 2,300, 83% of them are now seizure-free. A third of them had stayed seizure-free even after going off their medication. And of those remaining patients that stayed on medication, 90% of them stayed seizure-free even though they'd been reduced to their lowest therapeutic dose. After reporting on the Andrews Rider program, I, I realized that this was important information that families affected by epilepsy needed to have. So I created a website, epilepsyconference.com. On the website, you'll find a direct link to the Andrews Rider workbook where you can purchase it and do the program yourself in your own living room. You can read my article for the Columbia Journalism School to learn more about my experiences and the investigative reporting I did about the program. You can download the relaxation tape. There's a blog for a collection of patients who've been through the program and stopped having seizures. And you can also read those peer-reviewed medical studies that I spoke about earlier. The Andrews Rider approach isn't some kind of miracle cure-all. It's important to recognize I am still having seizures about once every six weeks in my sleep where I can't employ these techniques of recognizing and deflating oncoming seizures. But what is significantly different in my life is that during my waking hours, I haven't had a seizure in more than 16 years. That means that every time I walk down the street, every time I go to court, I never have that thundercloud over me waiting to strike. I know that if I ever have those visual irregularities, those pre-aura signs of a coming seizure, I can stop, I can relax, and I can deflate those seizures with 100% effectiveness in just a second and a half. Doing that has absolutely freed up my life, eliminating the anxiety that used to hover over me, creating a, a great sense of joy and opportunity for the future. If you want to know more about the program, you want to know more about my experiences, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk with you and share more of my reporting and research and personal experience.